Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number uh, 33. Today is March 26th and uh, happy Thursday to y'all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Also, please remember to be asking your questions during this call so we can have our uh, regular Q&A session at the end. I will now pass the word to Luca for the engineering department updates. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Angie. We'd like to start the update today mentioning uh, again a few things about what we communicated uh, during last week's Weekly Insider for those of you who were not there. And uh, also uh, because it is our main focus uh, at the moment uh, for what regards the engineering department. So last week, Alberto announced that uh, we are about to make public the development we have done regarding ZK Snarks. And in particular, this means that we are going to publish a very important library um, within the end. So it's really just a matter of days now. And uh, we have here Alberto, so passing the word uh, to him to describe a little bit again, what is this uh, library about? Please, Alberto, feel free to continue. Oh, thanks, Luca. Uh, okay, as um, we described last week, uh, the library is called uh, Gingerlib, and uh, it's a fork of uh, Zexe with the goal of creating a general purpose library. So, uh, what is the idea? The idea is uh, uh, to give uh, to developers uh, a zero knowledge toolset that allows them to create their own applications. For this reason, uh, uh, let me say the library ships uh, with a set of uh, primitives that can uh, meet different use cases, and and also uh, it includes a set of the corresponding gadgets that can be used by the the user to uh, put the constraints on, on uh, such primitives. Moreover, um, another important part is the introduction of the full MT4 and MT6 uh, cure cycle that will allow developers to perform uh, recursive snarks. Of course, um, the development uh, will uh, continue in future and uh, will continue publicly, and uh, we will be glad to have any contribution from the community. Uh, okay, and uh, this was regarding uh, uh, Gingerlib. Okay, regarding a uh, sidechain consensus, uh, um, we made um, an important addition uh, that um, <coughs> is responsible to manage uh, um, recursive forks in, in mainchain. Uh, what I mean? Let's say that we have um, multiple forks in mainchain and we want to have the sidechain uh, managing these kind of forks uh, in a proper way. So we introduced the, the concept of OMERS in the sidechain, and in particular for recursive, for let me say subsequent forks in mainchain, we um, also introduced the concept of <coughs> recursive OMERS. And these will allow sidechain to react properly also in case of uh, races in, in mainchain. And this is quite important because, as you can imagine, there could be some forward transfer that happened in mainchain that then has been. Uh, reverted by uh, a possible fork. And if this happens, obviously the sidechain should react. And let's assume that <coughs> a race uh, happened in mainchain. It could even happen that uh, the sidechain should react also to this uh, next uh, uh, let's say fork. And for this reason, it is very important that the sidechain takes care of it. And this is done by this concept of um, recursive OMERS. Uh, these, uh, also this part of the uh, extension in the consensus has been, um, is currently and uh, described uh, in a document uh, where we are formally describing uh, the sidechain consensus. And so we are uh, uh, describing from an academical standpoint the consensus and what are the rules uh, uh, that we are applying for determining the longest chain rule and, and all the stuff that, let me say, um, is related to the changes that we adopted to Ouroboros um, to manage these two chain consensus. 
and the, and also the goal of this document will be to uh, have uh, a formal proof of the security of uh, of this modified consensus. So. Um, this document is probably a candidate for uh, even an additional paper, but currently, I mean, is just uh, for us for let me say having uh, a way for analyzing all the all the, um, the and describing uh, all the um, modification that we uh, made on the original Robert Sprouse consensus and and also having a place where to put the analysis of the security of it. Um, and I think it's almost everything for me. Thanks, Luca. Actually, actually, Alberto, you, oh, you forgot to mention the most important thing about why why the library is called Ginger. <laughs> oh, please, Rob, <laughs> tell it. No, I, I'm not. I'm not a real Italian, so I, I think uh, you were. Oh, okay, I, I will tell. <laughs> okay, okay. Ginger in Italian is zenzero, and so here came the let me say the joke about zen zero knowledge. So. Zen zero knowledge, and so ginger uh, it was the name of the was chosen as the name of the library. It's just a joke, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, about the 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 zen zero word in Italian. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, I think it was a brilliant update, and uh, I will also continue speaking about the other activities. All of them are also in progress. So, in relation to the site chain SDK above. Uh, what Alberto already described, we also did an update related to the forger logic and structure and also made changes to the sidechain test framework to support the new forging procedure. Now working on uh, VRF related primitives restructure uh, according to the, uh, to, the to the new architecture, to the SDK architecture. And also these uh, uh, and some other parts that were completed will be waiting for uh, for review that will be performed in the next days. On the main chain side, and again in relation to sidechain beta, the work on the changes that were requested is is going on, and additional code review sessions were performed this week. Then, for what regards Sphere by Horizon. Uh, last uh, item on, on my list. Uh, yesterday we conducted a first code review for the new upcoming release. A few suggestions uh, to make the code more clear and understandable were requested. So um, together with some last minute, uh, last minute uh, graphic improvements. So we are working on this and preparing the code for the final code review scheduled for tomorrow morning. If successful, we'll immediately proceed with the release. Um, Oh, and one more thing, preparing uh, uh, the engineering slides for uh, next community live stream. Thank you all, and back to Angie. Thank you, Alberto and Luca. Let's continue with Spencer for the help desk updates. Good day, everyone. In addition to testing the new versions of the wallets coming out, we've been very busy handling the help desk as well. So if you look on the text channel, You'll see our split uh, as is typical. We've got about 85% tickets from the faucet and uh, the balance of the other tickets are dominated by Sphere. And since Sphere is such an important application for us, I've given, we've given you a pie chart uh, breaking out uh, what's actually happening with Sphere, primarily uh, instruction. Uh, as far as actual numbers go, we've got 60 tickets resolved in the last seven days, 100 items open. 45 items waiting for support, 55 waiting for customer. Uh, we do have 34 items in Escalated. That's all related to practically one issue, which is going to be resolved very soon. And uh, this is probably uh, the least pleasant aspect of the report. Our customer satisfaction is not up to our standard uh, combination of factors. We had a low number of reviews and one or two, uh, excuse me, we had two bad reviews which disproportionately affected the rating. Uh, so, uh, for instance, one ticket was closed out for non-response, which regarded, which ended up in a one-star review, which really dropped our rating. So we hope to get that back way above uh, 4.0 as, as we typically are. So that's respond, the report from the uh, help desk this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Now we continue with Gustavo for UX updates. Hey everyone, happy Thursday. So this week we've been uh, working testing on the new release on Sphere 
And uh, we also, on the faucet side, we've been working on a new set of features. So Jonathan from the growth team will update us on that. And uh, we've been also working uh, on a Ryzen developer environment in order to to have the release to coincide with sidechain beta. So there's a lot of going on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gustavo. We continue with Rowan for BD updates. Thanks, Angie. Hello, everyone. A um, little bit of a, a mixed bag of updates here. So first off, on the HR side, everybody should have received a contractor survey now. So that's going to help us prioritize the process improvements that Leslie is spearheading as we speak. Uh, so we're looking for some really honest feedback here. Ultimately, the feedback that we receive is going to help us prioritize the, the improvements that we're making and ultimately make everyone's work experience better. So please uh, get those surveys back to us as quickly as you can. Uh, Rob may want to say a few words about that at the end, so I'll leave that one there. On the finance and accounting side, we now have new bank accounts open. I'm not going to bore everybody on this call with the details, but ultimately we weren't having the best experience with our previous banking partner. Uh, so we're now in a process of moving across all of our payables to that new account. Obviously having multiple accounts for redundancy, which is always nice. We're also in the final stages of finalizing our new budget. It's been a little bit of a choppy market, uh, so we need to make sure that we have that squared away as soon as we can. So that's just going to be happening in the next couple of days. Pretty much everything that we need is in place for that already, which is great. And then on the BD side, unfortunately, uh, everybody having to work from home is delaying quite a number of the ongoing conversations that we've been having. We do have uh, three different integrations that are going to be going live. We kind of expect them to be going live by now. Like I say, a little bit of a delay, uh, but I hope to be speaking in a little more detail about what we're working on there in the next week or so. Uh, as I mentioned previously, focus for this year is pretty much on fiat gateways. So we're talking about exchanges. We're talking about things like debit cards, ATMs. Um, we're also looking to expand our suite of custody partners to make it nice and easy for institutionals to uh, hold cryptocurrency nice and safely. So that's the main updates from me. Uh, Vano, if you want to jump in with anything from your side, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Rowan. So um, from my side, um, we are still in the process um, of integrating in a large Russian language media outlet. Um, we are still talking with them, and also we might uh, get a fiat peer in the regional exchange. We are also in talks with them. And also I had an uh, idea this year that I was going to do a series of meetups here in Georgia, but as we are bound to homes now, I was thinking to do it virtually, as we have uh, still quite a large meetup group in Georgia. And I also think if we uh, do it online and in English, we can actually cover the neighbor regions also, where we have a matching time zones. That's all from me. Thank you, guys. Let's continue now with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, so from the marketing side, uh, we are preparing for uh, multiple upcoming uh, major releases, including a new ZK Snark uh, library, uh, Luca and Alberto just uh, uh, introduced, uh, and then also our sidechain beta updated uh, faucet with new reward features and, and uh, uh, other exciting releases. So in conjunction with all the releases, uh, we are also in the process of updating and upgrading our websites, uh, both on the front and the back, uh, back end. And then also our first quarterly live stream is next week, uh, Wednesday. So uh, we are preparing for that, working on putting together a, a very comprehensive report for our Q1 accomplishments and performance. Uh, we have a lot to share in the coming uh, live stream. So please make sure that you uh, mark that on your calendar. And that is next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then also Ralph had an interview with Crypto Rich uh, last week. Uh, so Ralph talked about Bitcoin price and mining uh, and it gave uh, uh, Horizon most uh, recent updates. Uh, so 
really interesting interview. Uh, you know, uh, please check out if you haven't done so. And then also we are working on getting more interviews with our other team members. Uh, and then I'll have more news to share when that happens. And then we have an ongoing side train video quiz, uh, which will be, this will be our last round for side train video promotion. Uh, we quizzed on all of our side train videos and uh, congratulations to the winner of the last round, Threadle uh, from Malaysia. Uh, and we will be announcing our new winner for this round tomorrow. So there's still time to participate in the quiz uh, and then you will get a chance to win a, uh, a side train t-shirt. So uh, you can find information on, uh, on how to join on our social uh, social media feeds, and uh, uh, that's all from uh, from marketing side. Thank you, and I pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey, great! Thanks, Lucy. Can you hear me? Very well. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll start with the bad news and then go to the great news. So I've been talking about uh, the WhatsApp bot uh, for a while. Well, apparently Twilio doesn't allow um, integrations with any blockchain companies. So we have to take a step back and figure out what we're going to use other than Twilio. So this kind of puts a wrench in things. And um, sorry, there's like a tractor driving by my house. So uh, yeah, so we have to figure out what else to use. And this is kind of a trend that we've been seeing where a lot of companies, including Google, Facebook, they have very tight restrictions on blockchain companies. So it's something that we're constantly dealing with here. Um, so that's the kind of uh, not so great news, but we'll figure it out. I'm, I'm hopeful we've already found two other options. Um, the great news. OK, so new features on the faucet. So first of all, we're going to have a verified wallet feature. So what does that mean? So uh, starting next week, you'll be able to log on to the faucet and verify your wallet. So you could verify it either through signing a message on Sphere, or for mobile users, you can use My Zen Wallet. So what are the benefits of this? The, the direct benefit is you're gonna get um, a bonus multiplier if you can verify uh, your wallet. But why are we doing this in the first place? Why do we want people to verify their wallets? It's a good question. Well, there, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, we wanna introduce users to our products rather than other products. We spend a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of brain power on creating what's probably some of the best products in the industry. So, you know, we want people to use that. Uh, also, we want users to be involved in the community. So if you're using our products, you're much more likely to be involved in Zen and the Zen ecosystem. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading your comments as I'm reading. And lastly, we want to get people familiar with privacy, uh, private keys, privacy, and security. So, uh, you know, part of verifying the wallet means having to understand the concept of private keys. And, you know, Zen is all about protecting your private keys, protecting your security. And so we want to incentivize that. So that will be out um, hopefully Friday, but if it's not out Friday, then look for it on Monday. In addition to that, within about two weeks, we're going to be introducing the HODL bonus. So once you've already verified a wallet address, if you keep your Zen in that address, you'll have added bonus based on how much you put into that address. So we'll have a lot more detail on that coming out. It's just kind of a little teaser for, for you all. Um, and lastly, we're going to have huge UX improvements to the rewards page. Huge improvements. I mean, the the I mean, it, it won't even look the same on the My Rewards page. It looks beautiful. Lucy has done, and Lucy and the whole team has done an amazing job. I would love to get like a way way back when machine visual of the current wallet today, the current faucet today, and what it was when we launched. Because I think we we've, we've I mean, it's it's just crazy the, the changes that we've made. Yeah, before and after. So that's it for me this week. I look forward to giving you another exciting update next week and uh, talk to you later and stay safe out there. Jonathan, I love you're tearing up over the, the faucet improvements. So am I. No, it's, it's that tractor that sprayed some weird stuff. So <laughs> you know, it's all getting in my eyes over here. You've been sanitized. It, yeah, exactly. It's just Lysol disinfected all over the place. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's continue now uh, with Dean for the legal updates. 
Thanks, Angie. Well, at least, uh, Jonathan, you know you're going to be safe from corona now. You're covered in Clorox. Um, okay, on the legal side, so uh, speaking of difficulties, uh, Rowan uh, alluded to it and mentioned it. So obviously blockchain companies have uh, banking issues as well, not just uh, issues with Twilio and Google Ads. Um, and so thanks to Rowan, Michelle, and Rolf, uh, we have some alternative bank accounts. Fortunately, I reached out to DCG, who made a wonderful introduction for us to Silvergate Bank. Um, and I believe that Silvergate will be a long-term partner for us because they understand our business and um, I don't mind that we are actually related to blockchain and crypto. So, Michelle, uh, I, sent, I sent you uh, their account documents. If you have any questions or need any legal documentation, please let me know. Um, and then lastly, it seems that we closed the loop with Code Particle and their uh, white label wallet that they're releasing. So Paolo, thank you for your time and effort reviewing that. And um, I forwarded them your last comments, assuming that you know they remove that one little piece of code, it looks like they will be uh, releasing their wallet. Um, but again, it now has nothing to do with Sphere or anything uh, similar. And that's it on the legal side. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dean. Now we have Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, guys. Uh, happy Thursday. So I just want to say it's a great testament to our team's resilience to be able to continue deliveries during these trying times. And I just, I'd like to thank each, each and one of you and then our community for continuing pushing Horizon. I've been working with the marketing team on the Ginger Lib press release, which will likely go out on the 31st of March. And a big shout out to Lucy. Uh, we're building our PR capability in-house. And this is a, a, a very um, capability that we had uh, typically outsourced. So. Uh, this is coming along really nicely. So shout out to uh, Lucy, uh, Eric, and the rest of the marketing team. Uh, we continue making significant progress towards the second part of our beta release, uh, which will include a Zen, Zen D, uh, SDK, and Sphere modifications for sidechains. And we're targeting uh, likely end of uh, April for the release. And we're looking forward to the community, uh, community testers and we'll have uh, HDE targeting to be released uh, to coincide uh, the, the second part of the site uh, beta release. Uh, and HDE, again, is the Horizon Developer Environment, and that will be a promotion for uh, our community developers to be able to participate in a very organized way. Uh, regarding products, we are surveying our products and actually completed the, the first iteration of that survey. And the next step is to provide recommendations on which products to continue and which to deprecate and a, pl a plan accordingly. Uh, regarding the live stream, uh, Lucy mentioned it's the 1st of April. We've completed the agenda and we're populating slides as we speak. And it comes in hand with our monthly priority meeting. So uh, we'll have some efficiencies there uh, prioritizing our monthly activities and then uh, updating our our live stream slides. Uh, a big focus for this live stream is an expl detailed explanation on GingerLib and of course an update of our side chains along with uh, cross division updates from BDE Marketing Growth and the ambassadors. Also, I'm happy to see our team maturing. Uh, we we are seeing integrating department processes. And that's, that's really something that uh, we shouldn't take lightly. So we, we're seeing our engineering and UX teams collaborating. And uh, some of the processes that we had with engineering are being planted in UX. And that's uh, amazing to see. So shout out for Tuan for doing an initial passive code review uh, for Paolo, uh, for Sphere. And uh, that really helps uh, provide efficiencies uh, to save Alberto's time uh, when doing the final code review. Uh, and also I'm seeing our, our help desk mature. So uh, the, some of the first priorities of the, of the help desk was to 
uh, refine the automations. Uh, so we're seeing that. So big shout out to Ruben and uh, Spencer and Stoic Nate for helping that process uh, go through. So uh, helped us is providing direct feedback to our products, and we're getting stronger as a team as a as a result of this cross pollination. Uh, so thank you all for all you do, and stay sun. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Rosario. And now we have uh, Rolf for some updates as well. Yeah, thanks, Angie. Uh, so I'm trying to think, what, what are things that we can do to leverage off the reality that many people are working from home and are working in a different way? Some of them are bored. Some of them are overwhelmed by the normal things at home, especially kids home from school. So I don't have any great ideas about that. Uh, I'm sure there's better ideas that other people come up with. But here's one idea. Uh, I'm doing more Zoom calls with people that I would normally visit in person. So I'd love to have images that I can use uh, as a Zoom background because I have a green screen that I can put behind me and I could do like horizon background images, you know, a business like one or a fun one, or we already have a bunch of horizon art uh, or a cartoon one, maybe, maybe even just make a Zoom background art package that people can download and they can use it as their backgrounds for the videos that they're doing. Anyway, uh, I, like I said, there's probably other ideas that people come up with now that many of the folks um, are, are working from home and doing other things and on their computer all the time. But anyway, that's just the idea that I have for today. I'd like to have a Zen coloring book, please. <laughs> okay, awesome. That I could print out at home. That would be great. Thank you, Ralph. And now we have Rob for the final part. Oh my God, Jonathan, you're just on a roll today. And guys, this is just way too fun of a of a weekly insider. I, I don't know what's gotten into you guys. Um, but okay, so so first things first, guys, join us next week for our quarterly live stream, April first. That's Wednesday. Uh, we have a, a good one in store for you. And in particular, you're, we're going to get into some of the the weeds on what is ginger. And you've heard the very cool uh, origin for for ginger. Uh, next up, actually, hear a little bit more about why it's so important. Um, okay, so internally, and we always have, uh, you know, this is a team call, first and foremost. I mean, we're reporting to the community, but really, this is also just kind of an internal, how are we doing business? How are we getting better? Um, that's always on our radar. And what we're doing now is we're decomposing the 2020 roadmap into more tractable KPIs by division by division and KPIs being key performance indicators. Uh, what we want to do is we want to have discrete kind of work elements or metrics that we can track performance of over time so that we have early indicators of, you know, either not you know, maybe deviating from being able to accomplish a particular roadmap deliverable, or maybe we're ahead in a particular area, maybe, maybe a different area needs more resources and so forth. If we don't track something, we can't improve it. So this is a really big uh, process improvement for us. Uh, speaking of process improvements, Rowan mentioned that we're conducting a team survey. We we want to know, you know, internally how how we're doing, you know, uh, from the perspective of our team members, right? Our team members are such an important part of our community and, and this overall effort. So we want to have now um, kind of this recurring, frequent process of of getting feedback internally and seeing what can we improve. Right? We can obviously always improve something. And uh, maybe maybe part of the, the giddiness this week and uh, Jonathan's tearing up over the faucet is because we have so many uh, you know, uh, really big deliverables going on right now, which seems a little surreal since the world around us is, is getting so chaotic. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. But just, uh, you know, the team just keeps powering forward, which is kind of nuts, especially since our our main office in Milan is is actually shut down right now, and everyone's working from home. The good news is we we're experts experts at remote work, right? That's one of the benefits of being in this industry and forming in a decentralized or distributed way like we have. So when we have to shut down an office, work goes on, uh, and and I would say we're being even more productive in some areas. So uh, Ginger is being released, and the Ginger library is is. Uh, is, is being released along with two other libraries, one specific to the side chain and one specific to the main chain. Um, and the, the amazing thing about Ginger is it, and, and why it's such a big deal, is that it provides much needed developer tools and not just for our own uh, project. And what you see often in, 
in the industry is libraries that are very important and used by many projects or released by projects with so much uh, verticalization for that specific project embedded in the library. So Ginger was built actually uh, as, a, as a, or specifically as a contribution to the industry. Um, so of course there are, uh, you know, some extremely useful tools that uh, extend our own capabilities and make our sidechain system possible. They're actually, they're absolutely required for us, but we, we built a library for the industry. So it's actually a general purpose library. It's not embedded with horizon specific stuff. Uh, it's, you know, clean, clear, comes with uh, extensive documentation and is going to be put into the public domain. So the continued contributions can be done in, you know, by the public. And of course, we'll be extending it ourselves. Um, so I, I, I do believe that this will become an, an industry standard library in short order. So I'm really excited for it. This is uh, probably our, um, for sure, our uh, single most significant uh, contribution to the industry thus far. So we're really proud of it. And we want to get the news out there for everyone. It's coming along with two Horizon specific libraries, um, like Alberto mentioned, and there'll be more details on all of those uh, by Alberto in the live stream. So guys, please make sure you you tune in on that. And what you've also heard today is we have a, a new release of Sphere by Horizon coming out, uh, hopefully on Friday, if everything goes well, with uh, final code review and testing, but it, it looks like everything is going well. And the cool thing about this goes to Rosario's point is we had uh, uh, we had a problem uh, that was turned into an opportunity. And the problem was uh, we were getting so much uh, you know, on-chain uh, transactions occurring because of the faucet and so many micro transactions uh, you know, hitting the network. And this causes some wallet problems for, you know, say, exchange partners that have just a heavy volume of these types of transactions. And when they rescan a wallet, they're rescanning you know, a tremendous volume of transactions. So what we did was we thought of a really cool solution, which is let's promote privacy and the idea of uh, safely or responsibly using crypto, where, you know, in, in crypto, the mantra is if you don't control your private keys, you actually don't uh, own your crypto. Maybe that's a little extreme, but what we for sure want is to encourage people to use our products, Sphere by Horizon in particular, but uh, also some of our other wallet offerings use those, understand what it is to actually take control of your crypto by owning your private keys. So the the signing feature that's being included in Sphere by Horizon here is a response to a growth item, uh, basically solving a problem, creating a new opportunity where the growth team can now integrate this into the faucet uh, as a productive way to you know encourage people to use our actual products and responsibly use crypto. So really happy about that. And the other reason I'm really happy about this is that uh, uh, you know, uh, last month, really, we stood up the, you know, some elements of an in-house product team, and we want to expand this over time. But we've uh, taken taken Sphere by Horizon, which was originally developed by a third-party uh, software company, and we brought it in-house. And since we brought it in-house, now it's part of our, um, you know, internal engineering uh, processes, part of our sprints, part of our high quality, our commitment to uh, extreme high quality. So you're seeing uh, significant improvements happen in short order, and this is just the start. Um, so we're also putting together a comprehensive product roadmap, which is going to include a survey of the products that we currently have and map those to particular elements of our user base so we can see where do we have gaps, uh, where do we have redundancies, and how do we actually streamline a product mix that really meets the needs of our community. Uh, so really, guys, a lot going on in the background here. Um, something else that's related to releases is uh, Lucy mentioned that we're putting together this in-house PR machine. Uh, she's really humble. Uh, she's actually done a ridiculous amount of work with her team, and they've put together two fantastic press releases uh, that honestly I'm super proud of going through them. They're such high quality. Uh, one is for the Ginger release, and the next one is for the, the rest of the beta release. Uh, really excited for them, and just the fact that we're building this in-house capability, I think is fantastic. Um, let's see. So I also had... I had some notes um, talking about the, you know, the, the broader macro events going on, but, you know, uh, r rather than be, uh, you know, repetitive here, since we did talk about this last week, let's just acknowledge the fact that we, we are now in a very volatile macro environment. So guys, everyone should be taking this seriously and staying safe. Um, but we do know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We don't know when that, when we're going to hit the end of the tunnel, but we know that there is, there is an end to the tunnel. Um, so things will get better at some point. But in the meantime, please take this seriously. Be safe. Our team is. We want our community to also be safe. 
Um, so at some point, things will be getting better. But uh, the big takeaway here, and this is what um, I, you know, I'm trying to make very clear to our team, but also to our community here, is I, I got into crypto for a particular reason, and I'm sure many of you guys did as well. Uh, and the, the reactions or what, what I see going on in the world right now just reinforces for, to me personally why I got into crypto. But I want to reiterate what our mission is here. And this is important for all of you guys who are listening today. Remember, the Horizon mission is to empower people and bring the world together by building a fair and inclusive ecosystem where everyone is rewarded for their contributions. Uh, so this is this is where we stand. And I think that what we're seeing in the world today shows that we need more of this. And we are extremely motivated here. Our resources may be extremely volatile and you know crashing with the market when that happens. Uh, but as a project, we're extremely resilient. We have a group of uh, ridiculously skilled professionals, but not just professionals, people who actually care about what they're doing. And we really believe in this mission. So this this is you know, the, the light under the project that we, we need to realize no matter what, things will get better and we're going to be here powering forward. So guys, thank you very much for listening here. I'll open it up here. And uh, Lucy, if we have any questions for Menti, please uh, relay them. Yes, we do. So the top question is, can Horizon publish the annual goals of each department or somehow quantify the goals so the Horizon community can assist with the execution? Wow, I really like that question. That's that's awesome. Uh, I would love that. So let's commit to it, right? We've committed to, we've published a 2020 roadmap. Uh, what I would like to commit to is uh, publishing our KPIs by division. So I think it would be really nice for the community to be able to follow along and help out. So if you see a particular area, you know, lagging or maybe another one's accelerating, we can all come together and help on this. So that's an excellent suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, I love that too. And then the second question is, do you see the current economic environment as favorable to digital currencies? What do you think a digital dollar would pose a threat to the decentralized currencies by way of legislation? I mean, uh, if anyone answers this completely definitively, they're, they're probably making up an answer. So I, the reality is we don't know, and I'll just give you my opinion. Uh, I think that we have a sort of two-phase process going on right now. I think the first phase is there's this macro shock and every single asset class that could be sold to raise cash just to figure out what's going on will be sold. And, and I think crypto very clearly has exhibited that um, sort of risk off trade, call it. Um, so I, I think we got caught up in that and, and there's no way around it because people are just confused. We really have no idea how things are going to play out. Uh, we don't know, you know, depth or breadth of, you know, the current macro environment, but we know we do know that something's wrong. I think phase two is more interesting. And phase two is, uh, you know, after this risk off trade, what happens next? And and whether this is near term or whether this is kind of a long term thesis for crypto, I'm a believer that it's a long term thesis for crypto. I have no idea where the short term markets are going, uh, but I I do believe that the current events and you know, say central bank and government responses where there is no limit to uh, you know currency supply. Um, I, I think is a very bullish thing for crypto because we are creating uh, alternative systems that are um, truncated in supply, right? Whether that's a truncation in, in total supply or a truncation on rate of growth of supply, there is a truncation, right? So there's some finiteness to it, um, and and I think that's extremely important. The world needs these types of experiments, and my personal belief is uh, what we're seeing now actually validates. That what we're doing is is more important than ever. Thank you, Rob. Uh, the last question is: With this new change to detect folks on main chain, does this address the issue where a side chain or all side chains might be seized because of its inability to signal liveness on main chain? This is a perfect Alberto question. <laughs> I was waiting, Rob. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. First, uh, I think that uh, there is um, uh, a misunderstanding behind this question. I saw uh, a question similar like this in the past. Okay. So, uh, one of the main elements that a, a blockchain should, uh, let me say, uh, one of the characteristics that should respect is liveness. What does this mean? This means that um, a transaction is going to be included in a block in a reasonable time frame. 
So, and this obviously uh, is based on other assumptions, I mean, about uh, not being controlled by a majority. If we, um, let me say, assume this, and I mean, and if we do not assume this, many other bad things should happen. I mean, if I control the majority uh, for a long period uh, of blockchain, I could, I mean, perform double spend and uh, another attack like this that are much more. So instead, if we assume that this is not the case, otherwise, I mean, there is no value in this blockchain. So if we assume that we are safe from that point of view, I mean, there is no risk uh, that um, of a censorship uh, for a long period of time uh, in, um, to, to prevent uh, a certificate to be included. So, uh, and so here, I mean, this uh, answer to the, to the question, because in reality, if we take a reasonable amount of uh, blocks to enable a sidechain to post his certificate, and we allow, uh, I mean, and we uh, choose this amount, of, I mean, as reasonable, we're sure that if the fees are going to be, let me say, enough, uh, let me say, uh, the fee ratio, I mean, the byte fee ratio, is going to be the the transaction will be accepted by the miner and will be included in the block. So, and moreover, <laughs> I add another part. Uh, I mean, of this story, uh, we are also introducing the possibility for the certificate submitter to subsidize the certificate admission. So, for example, let's say that. Uh, for an epoch, we have a certificate with no backward transfers. So uh, somehow uh, we cannot take uh, even, let me say, the amount from the backward transfer that uh, should uh, fund the fees for submitting the certificate. We allow the um, submitter to, f to fund the fees that are going to be paid uh, to the miner to include um, uh, the certificate itself. Obviously, when this certificate is going to be included in the main chain block, and the main chain block is going to be synced back to the sidechain, the submitter, I mean, based on the logic on the sidechain, will, uh, will be rewarded for its work. So this, this approach gives us, uh, uh, let me say, uh, many benefits. First, that, I mean, for example, if, if a sidechain is still starting, no transactions there, so no possibility to fund uh, the, the certificate fees. I mean, probably the developer for the first epochs is going to be, let me say, one of the player that is going to fund this submission. But obviously, when the, when the sidechain will be, uh, let me say, active, there will be volume and everything will be, let me say, uh, funded by the transactions that are going to happen in the sidechain. Uh, and moreover, this gives also the possibility to introduce any kind of different uh, logic in the sidechain to reward the submission. And this will create a market between possible set of submitters to play <laughs> with, the, with the fees to be the one that uh, is winning the possibility to uh, being included uh, in, in the main chain. So, I mean, the typical game would be uh, um, um, a submitter, let's say that for the first round, uh, a set of submitters is, uh, is, uh, um, is allowed, and they are going to, uh, well, let me say, compete each other with higher fees. I mean, but obviously, everything will be... Uh, uh, profitable up to the amount that they are going to receive when the site when the, when the site chain will sink back the main chain block and uh, we reward them for the for for what is uh, i mean the, for what the site chain um uh, let me say define the reward for submitting the certificate 
So, and this will create a market and a competition uh, between the submitters. Okay, and this is the first part of the story. Sorry, it's a bit long, but I mean, uh, okay, so we, we understood why there is no issue about uh, certificate admission. Okay, and so, and now uh, maybe I will go a bit of, a bit of more detail in details about uh, um, what is the, let me say, the, the forks of forks that is totally unrelated to the certificate uh, admission. So, uh, one of the main goals we had in the sidechain consensus when we designed the sidechain consensus was to give the possibility to validate uh, the full sidechain history without having to follow mainchain. This means, and I'm uh, sorry, and remember that uh, you are transferring coins from mainchain to sidechain, and then you're using these coins in the sidechain. So how can this be possible? This is possible by, let me say, we are restructuring somehow the mainchain block to give the possibility to, to the sidechain to include only the sidechain-related information in the mainchain block. Okay. Uh, this will prove to anyone in the sidechain, to every node, that the sidechain block is valid and is using real mainchain, uh, let me say, coins that have been transferred in a specific mainchain block. And obviously, we, we don't want to include the, the whole mainchain block. We are just including uh, some, only the sidechain specific, only that sidechain specific data of that specific mainchain block. But we have to validate, I mean, the, the history uh, of these mainchain parts in the sidechain. And so we are including some other information that will last give to any node to, to validate this history and validate, for example, the proof of work. Uh, okay, but what happens if a mainchain fork happens? Some of the sidechain transactions that were spending the forward transfer that happened before should be uh, voided, cancelled. So, in reality, a mainchain fork causes a sidechain fork. Okay, uh, I mean, that's not bad. Uh, it's fine, it's totally fine. But, okay, how can you manage this in the sidechain? So, and the problem is that we uh, analyze, analyzed in the past is, okay, this is not a real sidechain fork because the consensus in the sidechain was okay. I mean, there was no, uh, let me say, split or, I mean, everything was proceeding linearly. So, it's a, let me say, non-wanted, uh, let us call it in this way, uh, fork. So, in reality, what we are doing, that's true that we are reverting the blocks that are subsequent, the sidechain blocks that are subsequent to the fork, mention fork uh, starting point. But we are omering, and omering is like, let me say, giving and the forger that, let me say, so this mention fork will uh, give, when it will forge the block, it will prove the, the necessity for forking the sidechain and how it will prove it. It will prove it by providing some succinct data about these sidechain blocks that are going to be reverted. And the, let me say, the main chain parts that are going to be, that, let me say, are part of the fork of the main chain, and the proof, and the proof, let me say, of this new main chain fork that allow him to omer these sidechain blocks. And why he will omer them? Because if he will omer them, it will retain the stake power. So this means that the score of this branch is is that's true that uh, the part of sidechain blocks that are going uh, that I mean that are uh, affected by the mainchain fork are going to be voided, but this forger and this slot and this um, block is keeping the score of the sidechain blocks that have been on. 
I mean, uh, there are, and, and this is just for, let me say, a linear fork. The, 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 um, the situation is even more complicated if you have, a, a, let me say, a race. And so, in mention. And if you have a race, you have to manage also these, these omers uh, in the race. But uh, we designed uh, the, um, the protocol in a way that is even managing multiple forks that can happen in the same, at the same time. And so, uh, the sidechain block will be able to omer recursively these um, these uh, sidechain forks. I mean, obviously, we are speaking about a very academical uh, uh, <laughs> uh, situation. I mean, uh, in, in reality, we have uh, very few forks, and races almost never. So, I mean, this is uh, probably is just let me say, to be on the safe side. But we wanted to be on the safe side and even uh, analyze this kind of a side cases and edge cases. And so with this, um, let's say, addition of these recursive omers that, I mean, have been already developed and currently uh, tests are going, uh, are, let me say, under development, just the tests. Let me say, with this system, we will be able to manage properly also such situation. I mean, obviously, when we are going to publish even the uh, LATUS consensus document, uh, this will be obviously more clear than my, uh, let me say, description uh, right now. But, okay, hopefully I answered to the question. That's all, huh? Yeah, thank you so much, Alberto. Uh, so thank you, everyone. These are the top three questions for today's Weekly Insider. Uh, we will post the rest of the questions and answers on the uh, Weekly Insider chat channel here on Discord. Uh, back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, amazing Weekly Insider. We're going to see you next uh, Wednesday on our live stream. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.